Pestilence here, and this episode is devoted to determining how old, approximately, your Miller Pancake Lock is. The information in here is generally transferable to whatever you know, style or uh, manufacturer of lock you have. I'm going to be using information that I've obtained from the internet, uh, whether it's a biography of locks that I'm using, or um, patents are a really good way of determining how old a lock is, and also uh, the manufacturer's catalogs. That's also a, a really good way. Uh, oftentimes you will see patent dates on locks, and that is all well and good. That is the patent date. That's not the date of manufacture. Sometimes people get that confused and they think that that's how old the lock is. Which, hmm, relatively speaking, may be true. Uh, you really can't tell exactly how old the lock is, but I wouldn't necessarily go by a patent date as being the same as the date of manufacture. So, that being said, uh, sometimes they're within a certain amount of time. Uh, some of these locks, uh, some of the designs, were manufactured for decades. And so, they're not all from, you know, the earliest point. Sometimes locks are manufactured for a short amount of time. And that can be determined by looking at uh, catalogs. And if you know you see a, a lock listed in one catalog and then uh, another catalog later on, it's not listed, then I would say the chances are very good that the lock was discontinued. However, mm, I can't say exactly how many catalogs, you know, how often they came out. And there's only uh, a few of them that are available online for download. Ugh. Okay. So, here we go. Uh, we will start out with the information that I have from the History of Six Lever Pushkey Padlocks, which is by Charles Cameron from May of 2002. And... <clears throat> excuse me. Miller... Uh, the Miller Company was known as D.K. Miller Company until about 1880. Uh, Miller uh, Company was incorporated in 1871. Okay, Daniel K. Miller, D.K. Miller, has been acknowledged as the originator of the design for the six-lever push-key padlock mechanism. On July 26, 1870, patent number... 105,710 was granted to him and listed his address as Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh, while his first patent did not show a push key mechanism, it had a round shaped case, a pop up sliding bar or metal bolt shackle, and an L shaped dog that interacted between the levers and the sliding bar to lock or unlock the lock. Okay. So, on October 21st, 1873, patent number 143,831 was then issued to Daniel K. Miller, now in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This patent shows the mechanism used in the production of models of the padlocks. Uh, one feature of this patent was the feature where the shackle could be released from the body of the lock when it was unlocked. Um, okay. The first padlocks produced by the D.K. Miller Lock Company were plain with the company name and the original patent date stamped on the front of the lock. Thus. And here is what I believe to be an original key. It is a thick key. has a little bit of rust on it. And this one, unfortunately... The spring mechanism um, either is really worn or, you know, I don't hear any shaking nor any rattling noises in there when I shake it. So uh, it could be that it just uh, came off 
or maybe it broke. But like I said, there's no rattling in there, so I'm not really sure why um, it's not working. It clicks really well, but you have to uh, push up on the shackle. So this is an example of one of the first locks. It has the DK Miller Company name, the patent date, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Excuse me. So we'll put that one and we'll put it right there. Okay. And here we have the same lock, DK Miller Company, Pennsylvania under here, and the patent date on there. Uh, this one works a lot better. Come on, get up. Are you drunk? All right. We'll set that one there. And it's a pretty smooth action on that lock. Okay. Now, later, the locks were produced with a cast design on the front. The first designs were Miller's and Champion. There. And I have, uh, it's not an original key, it is one of the thinner, thinner style. Works just fine. Well, it pops up there. And this is a Champion six lever. And as it said, the other one um, was Miller's. Although the company for a fee would put whatever the company that was buying the locks would put their name on here instead. So we'll place that one there. Uh, an option was also offered for an upcharge where a company could have their initials cast on the case instead of the stock design. And he postures that this possibly was the origination of the popular collectible logo locks. Now, I have looked up in the 1885 catalog and I have found this one listed. And it shows an illustration of the Champion 6 lever padlock, as this is. Now, and well, we'll skip over that. On March 11, 1902, patent number 695,347 was granted to Frank Soli and assigned to the Miller Lock Company. This patent presented a new design for the shackle and locking dog. This design was briefly used in the smaller locks, blah, 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 uh, and they eventually used it for the six lever style shackle and dog. Another feature of this patent was the use of a through rivet to retain the shackle in the lock body rather than the original spring-loaded catch. This change led to what is known to collectors as the left pin style of lock due to the visibility of the rivet in the front design of the lock. VAR. Boom. Now, unfortunately, I do not have a key for this one. But it uh, seems like it would spring open if I had a key, which I don't. And I've tried to pick it using various methods and, well, it's still locked. So, we have the original, which I believe was manufactured uh, around the late 1870s. Then we have, we'll slide this one over here, the next one, which was a Champion 6 lever, which was manufactured, oh, you uncooperative troublemaker. Okay, as I was saying, I believe that this design 
would have been manufactured starting in the late 1880s. Now, the Champion 6 lever, the patent was uh, granted in 1902. And I've seen in the uh, Miller 1905 catalog this style with the left pin, <clears throat> excuse me, left pin, which tells me, excuse me, that this was manufactured in, after 1902. Now, I do not know if Miller produced catalogs in between 1885 and 1905. I would think so. Uh, unfortunately, the only ones that are available are those and some later uh, later dates after that. So, um, what happened is that uh, after Miller Lock Company's patent protection expired, several other lock companies added the six lever push key padlocks to their production. Uh, so he postures that this competition probably prompted Miller to add the lower priced brass empire model. Uh, champion locks were made from gunmetal, uh, which was a harder alloy, to their line. The empire model added a balancing rivet spot to the cover design, resulting in what collectors call the two pin style lock. So you see a lot of other companies coming out later on with their own six lever padlocks. And uh, another note is that uh, in 1904, uh, the DK Miller Company was re reincorporated. Uh, they also were sold to Yale and Town Manufacturing Company in the 1930s. So, you know, what have we learned from this? Well, we can't exactly pin down an exact date of when these were manufactured, but we can pin it down uh, closer to at least a decade, which may not sound like a lot, but uh, as I said, sometimes locks are manufactured for long periods of time. So what we have are the late 1870s, late 1880s to 1902, and then uh, 1902, 1903 forward. And I believe that's about as good as it's going to get. So I may do uh, some other episodes like this with other locks, uh, maybe one on Yale locks. So we will see. But if you have any questions, I will try to answer them. But um, that's about all that I could come up with. So thanks for watching. Take care. Stay legal. Bye.